Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of Dungeon of the Endless. So, we're up on floor number 5 right now, and unfortunately we've got to venture deeper into this mess of a place. So, we have a four-way intersection to start us off with here, which is particularly nasty, but we're going to see what happens as we get going. So we're going to start off by heading over in the left direction. What is lying off to our west? Thankfully there is a place here we can start a major construction, and there's a free item in here too. That's a good start. That gives us a tools belt. I think that gives somebody the operator's job. No, that's some repair things. Okay, that's good too. I'm going to be giving that to uh, our primary wit user here, Warden Momish. Because, Mormish rather. That will buff up, hopefully, the amount of extra um, resources he gives us. And will let him repair things that are damaged in his room. So that could be pretty darn useful. For now, though, we're just going to keep moving, and after, actually before that, we're going to throw down an Industry Generator Mark III first. Because that should help us stay ahead of the curve here and make sure we don't run into problems. I am going to leave Mormish behind, though, so he'll be able to generate more industry for us until we find somewhere we can build something else which looks like right here. Yes. Okay. Well, that's handy. We immediately found another place we can build something. In here, we're going to throw down a Science Generator, I think. Another food replicator would be good, so we can keep ahead of the leveling curve, but right now what I want is more technology. The faster we gain the ability to actually stay ahead of our uh, our enemy's advancement, will be good days. So, there is poison gas in here, unfortunately, so it's going to make things a bit slower, but we should be okay. We'll see what the boost is here. Originally it was six, so we'll see if it's better than that this time. Once we open the door, the increase changes to... Oh, it's a science. I wasn't looking at the right number. Alright, well it was 15. It's 15 now. I don't remember what it was before, unfortunately. we got some nasty snaky monsters in here, but we should be able to gun them down. There we go. Turn the lights on in here, and we're going to throw down a food replicator as well. Excellent. So we've got all of our resources generating. 15 science a turn is pretty darn good, though, so I can't complain about that. Let's go to the next room and see what's in here. Lots and lots of dust, and we found a self-powered room. This is actually really nice. Found a couple really good rooms in this direction. This has been a pretty sweet start. I'm tempted to throw some turrets in here, because I have a feeling we're going to need them soon, but we have two rooms worth of power already, so... Maybe not. Let's go straight to the west again still. This seems like it's been pretty effective so far. Another room with a ton of dust in it. That's awesome. In here, I think we're going to throw down another industry generator, though, because right now, we're not generating enough to really keep up with our demand. So we'll do that, and we'll keep going. Here we find some free industry. Well, that's going to help. <laughs> Nine free industry. Okay, well, that's a lot of goods. We can throw down another uh, generator here, but I don't know if that's really a great idea at the moment. It's going to cost us a whole ton of resources. And then if we need to build anything soon, we're going to be hard-pressed to actually have the stuff to do it. But I'm kind of tempted to put one down anyway, just because it'll help us stay ahead. So we're going to put another food replicator down, and that should really speed up the rate at which we can uh, level up our characters. Since we're only at low level right now, let's take a look at them. We can love up Elise Ness for 52. We can do Jaleri. She gets a skill, so we'll level her up, and it's even cheaper for her, so... Let's do that. That gets her. Uh, that gets us rather her War Rider her ability. That one gives us a 10 speed boost and a 50 defense boost on herself for 10 seconds, which can be really good for getting her somewhere in a hurry and making sure she doesn't die en route, especially with her scamper ability, so she doesn't get slowed down by enemies in the area. Gork, you get another active ability if we level you up, so I'm probably gonna level you up here. I think it's probably worth it. The defense and attack power will be nice, and the extra ability is a really good one. Warcry is really cool. It gives him a 70 defense buff, and it makes all of the monsters try and attack him instead of anything else. So that can be really good for stopping things from destroying your core or destroying other buildings that you really want to protect, which is pretty darn cool. So that might come in real handy up in the future here. So we'll level them up, and I guess we keep going. We've got more doors to open. We need a little bit more dust to be able to stay safe in them, but, uh... Oh, hang on. No, no. Oh, I did it again. All right. Well, I'm going to move you off of science and put you back on food generation, since I moved you by mistake anyway. That was only at 6 before. So it's at 12 before he starts doing work, and we'll see what it switches to now. Our friends over here, though, have been fighting some horribly bloated abominations. Those guys explode when you kill them, so if you're not careful, they can do a lot of damage in a hurry. Rather, they, do ex they explode when they attack. 
This is another dead end, so it's actually a lot of good places for us to build up in here. It's going to be really expensive to build another one, though, so I'm not really keen on putting another primary construction there. But, uh... That was pretty interesting as far as actually finding good stuff at the beginning here goes. We had a very nice run of being able to get our production up. Are you operating this now? It's 12 now? What was it at before, then? I guess it was at 6 before? Is it still only 6 boost? I wish I could see where all the sources were if I hovered over it. That would be a nice little change, but uh, that doesn't seem to be an option, so we'll just keep going. In here we find a bit more dust, so we can power this room. No major nodes in here, but a bunch of small ones, so we'll be able to hopefully protect ourselves if anything nasty is lying down this way. There's our science machine. Let's take a look. We can get the tactical heads-up display. That's a nice one. Pepper spray is a really cool ability, though. I might get this one. You spray enemies with this as a module, and it causes them to attack each other. Pretty darn interesting. I might grab that one instead of the tactical heads-up display, but this one is good already, because it uses a couple different things differently. For one thing, this buffs all of our attack powers, and the other thing about it is that it has a separate cost from the generators. So these generators cost 45 to build now, this still only costs 35 to build, so it's kind of it's kind of a different thing to take. I think I might grab this just because it's a useful ability to have access to if you've bought, built a whole bunch of generators but have a bunch of major nodes you still want to take advantage of. So we'll see about that afterwards. Alright, so we can't power this room though, we're gonna need to throw in some defenses here. We're gonna put some in this room Throw down some prisoner prods in there, and we'll throw one or two in this room as well. We've got plenty of power, industry rather, to burn here. So, let's grab our A-team, and we're going to check out this room. Big room here, looks like. There's a bunch of industry. We can run this up now. These guys are going to be gunning straight for our core, so we're going to try and chase after them. Try and stop them from getting away. There we go. Lasers got them. That's good. These guys, I think, actually paralyze some of your teammates, preventing them from moving. I'm not sure if I've actually seen it happen, because I've never tried to move someone while they've been grabbed by it, but that's how I understand it works. That room's under lockdown for the time being, too, so we're going to have to ignore that one. What's through here? Another dead-end room? What's in it? Anything good? Ten dust. Okay, that's pretty good. Ten dust is pretty good. We're going to hold on to it, though. We're going to use the uh, prods to protect these areas instead, and we will keep going onwards and upwards, because we're going to want a little bit of dust on hand to move into new areas, even if there are people here already. Alright, let's make sure we're protecting this room, though. If they're going to ambush us right while we're here, we might as well kill them. Okay, there we go. Let's head on up this way and check out what's through here instead. We have a ton of food again. 21 food generation right now means we must be getting like 7? Or, or 9? Because it was 12 before, for sure. It seems pretty darn good, though. Alright, let's level some other people up since we've got tons of food coming in now. I could level him up again, or I could level... Actually, I should level you up. We're only level 3. That'll get you a new passive, which turns out is the Operate passive, which isn't great, but we'll take it. <clears throat> Leveling you up again gets us a new Activatable skill. That might be worth getting next. I'll hold off on that for now, but that might be worth getting next. We'll see. Let's go check out this door, and we'll see what we get inside. I am Gork. You are Gork's target practice. That's the exit. Wow. Okay. Well, that was a really effective path we chose, turns out. Straight path to the exit. All right. Well, we know we can get out of here in a hurry if we need to. It's best for us if we don't rush, though, if we can try and take things slow and explore everywhere, because then we get much more rewards for it. So let's go up to the north instead. Here we go. Not enough to power this room yet, which is a problem. We're going to need to grab some power, otherwise we're going to be in trouble here. Let us turn on the extra damage, because we need to kill these guys quickly. And make sure they don't damage our core too much, because I really don't want to lose any power. Thank you very much. We lost a whole bunch of power there, unfortunately, and they already got through here, which isn't great either. That's a lot of enemies on, our, on their way here. Alright, let's send these guys back to join up with our other heroes. To make sure he doesn't get killed by enemies that are targeting him specifically. There we go. We should be okay now. We got enough firepower over there in time. We did lose a good amount of dust, though, in that attack, which is why we don't want to leave those rooms unpowered. Unfortunately, we have generators in most of these rooms, and weapons in most of these rooms, so we can't really afford, afford to depower most of them. I'll turn off this one for now, so we at least have something there. This is going to be a problem, though, if we're trying to advance and we don't have enough power. We may just need to book it out of here depending on how this goes. 
We'll see, though, I suppose. Let's open the door and see what's inside. This looks like a dead-end room. Yep, does have nine power, though, and a cryo capsule. That could be good. What's inside? Costs 20 industry to open it. And inside we get 23 food. Okay, that's nice. Very nice indeed. Lots of enemy waves coming, though, so we're gonna get our team back to help out with that. Book it over here, ladies and gents. You're gonna need some more firepower over there in a hurry. Alright, we might see one of these guys explode for the first time. It's nasty when they do. Oh, here he goes. Watch our health. Oh, I think we killed him right before he actually exploded, because he didn't do any damage. Okay, that was good. He still exploded, but it didn't actually hurt us that time. We have a ton of food again, so we're gonna level some more people up. We could level two people up pretty reasonably here. Let's level him up and see what his other activatable ability is. Armchair General. Oh. Oh, that's really cool. <clears throat> heroes in the floor get an attack power boost of 40 if this hero's in a room without monsters. Huh, so he really is designed to not be in the room with the people who are fighting. That's really cool. That means we have a serious damage boost we can give to everybody else as long as he's not with them. That's really neat. We could level him up again, too, but that seems like a bit of a waste right now. We have other people who could use that level up a little bit better, I suspect. We'll throw this one into Lady Jalari to give her a bit more defense and health and damage. And the next one gives her her next power, and her next power is awesome. So we might try and rush for that one. She might be our first level 6 character. Alright, well that was really good. Let's keep going over this way and see if we can find any other good loot on this floor before things start to get a little bit overwhelming. We are going to throw down some more turrets though, because there's a bunch of good spots for them in these rooms to protect our exit. No, don't, don't move there. Don't move there. Okay, those turrets are all breaking, which is going to be a problem. But we should be okay to leave them. You should be okay. So let's just take our A-team over this way and we'll experiment with what's on this side. If things start to get out of hand, we can just grab the crystal and run too. It's not that far. What is in here? A treasure chest. That's good. What do we find? We found a restrainer. Okay, there's some armor. We could use some armor. <clears throat> Excuse me, hang on a second. Hmm. There we go. Much better. So, the restrainer, we can only give that to a couple people, but we have a bunch of people who aren't wearing armor yet who could probably use some. I'm going to give this restrainer to uh, Mormish right now, actually. Just so that if he gets ambushed, he doesn't lose all of his uh, lose all of his life super fast. He should be a little bit tougher that way. And that seems like a good choice. Now, we're going to need to book it back over there, but we need to make sure we power this room. So, we're going to turn off the exit to power this one briefly. These rooms we both really want to have power in. If we don't have them powered, we're kind of risking trouble to the core for no good reason. But it looks like all the enemies are spawning on the other side right now, so we're going to rush everybody over here. Are they destroying things? Not those things. Not these things. Alright, we should be okay. It doesn't look like they're actually destroying anything, they're just yelling. Alright, how long is the cooldown on his ability here? A three-door cooldown, so it's pretty significant. We're gonna buff them, though. Problem is, if they get in the room, the buff turns off. Hmm. That's definitely something to be aware of. Yeah, if they get in the room, the buff stops happening, so... that That's definitely concerning. But it's pretty powerful, so that's pretty good. If he's not near all the enemies, we can get a lot of damage out of him that way. Alright, let's go try this. We're going to look around a little bit more in this area, and then we might just book it out of here. But we're getting a lot of really valuable resources. We're leveling up our characters. All that stuff is really important. So we want to kind of take advantage of it as best we can. I should probably throw some turrets in here, though, if we're not going to have power in that room. Hmm. Power problems are definitely real. Let's, uh... Let's keep going in this direction. I don't really want to open this door right now. Dust, please? No dust. And that was an EMP. What did we lose? We lost... What rooms did we lose? 
lost this room. That might be all. Okay, that's not so bad. We only lost one room of turrets to that EMP. Okay. That's not so bad. We should be able to live through this still. We should be very careful, though, because we're definitely starting to overreach our... Uh... Oh, we found an artifact. We can do some science here while we're in the room. We don't have much... Uh... We don't have much science to spend, but we can get a little bit of it here. Auto dock shards will get us a little bit of health regeneration. That might be worth getting. Bioorganic transference is an interesting one. When you kill enemies, it turns them into health given to all the heroes in the room. It's not much health, though. So I'm not sure if that's really worth it. This is another interesting one. This one does damage based on how much power you have. So right now it's only one damage, but if you get even more, it starts to do more. The knowledge is power cannon. It's a weird one. Could be worth trying. Right now with 99 power, we'd get basically, or rather 99 uh, science, it would have like a 9... Nine power to start with, which is not great, but if we stockpile the whole bunch, it could be really strong. We have a lot of other things we could research, though. We're gonna research. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna scramble these ones, see if we can get something more interesting. There's a bunch of things I'm looking for in particular, but I don't. I'm not uh, not getting them right now. Tear gas is a damage per second thing. That's interesting. It also reduces the defense of monsters in the room, which is cool. The dust field generator makes our heroes tougher. I think we're gonna try the tear gas. That might be interesting. Making our making our monsters have less defense sounds really useful. I'm gonna grab that, and we're gonna get our heroes back over in this direction because there's probably gonna be an ambush coming soon. We're gonna open this door, and then I think we're just gonna book it out of here. We might not do too many more door opens, even though we are gaining a lot of valuable food and stuff out of this. Who else do we want to level up here? Probably. Jalari to lock. Because she gets us an awesome ability. So we're going to do this here. She gets a bunch more health, defense, speed, DPS. But the more important thing is we gain access to her hold the line ability. The hold the line ability gives all the heroes in the room with her 100% more defense. It's amazing. As a downside, you have a 40% less chance of getting random dust loot from the individual monsters you kill. But that is... Such a good defensive ability helps everybody on the in the group with it. It's so powerful. Lasts for nine seconds. There's a two turn two room cooldown. It's so good. So we're probably gonna make a good amount of use of that. Let us quickly though hit this last door. Is there anything in here? Just some bugs. All right. Well, we'll kill these monsters hopefully pretty quick. Uh oh, they're already rushing the door. Now here's what we're gonna do to prevent them from attacking our core too much. We are going to activate our War Cry ability, which forces enemies in the same room as us to attack us instead. So even those guys would normally be attacking our core right now, they're forced to attack us. So we're going to activate our Armchair General ability, we're going to activate a bunch of powers here to make sure we can kill these guys as quickly as possible, because there's a whole bunch of them in here, and I'd rather not us have us die horrible deaths right now. So let's also activate the Hold the Line we just talked about to make us, whoa, okay, a whole bunch harder to kill because we are taking a bunch of damage all of a sudden. Psycho Killer's already on. Oh, didn't mean to do that. That was a huge waste. Unfortunately. Lots of damage taken here. All right, we need to take the core and run as soon as this is done. Kill these guys, please. There's a whole bunch of them here. They need to die. Are you getting attacked too over there? No, your health is just low. I feel like I missed something over here. I don't know what it is though. Weird. I think these guys are mostly dead now, which is good. We're taking a lot of damage. It's a good thing we generate so much food because we're using a lot of it all of a sudden. We should be able to survive this though. Yeah, there's our full health regeneration. Good stuff. All right, it is time for us to bail on this place. Turn off power to non-essential rooms, and we are going to get ready to tank them out of here. So, we need to build some defensive towers quickly. We have plenty of power to do so with. Throw some down in the areas leading up to where we're going to be. 
use our industry well to so make sure we can actually get out of this alive, lock up as many of these pow rooms with power that we can to prevent enemies from actually spawning there, and we'll get out of here. Also, we have the tactical HUD now, so I should be using that to my benefit to protect myself when the enemies are uh, getting more powerful. We can put one of those down, and it'll buff us up, but I didn't think about it at the time, so we're just going to have to deal without having it. Let us grab this. We're going to grab our uh, crystal here. Do it. And it's time for us to bail. Everybody get out. Door opens. Anything in there? Eleven dust. That's nice. Door opens with another door behind it. Well, that's lovely. We unlocked our tear gas upgrade. More doors are opening. Uh-oh, everybody's got to get out of here, not just us. In there is an artifact. Okay, well, we can ignore that. Nothing too fancy in these rooms that we've missed yet. Last door, the current dungeon floor just opened. And it had some science in it, but we can't gather it, so that's fine. All we're losing is a little bit of science here. All of our heroes are ready to evacuate. Just make sure we uh, murder some of these guys for our trouble here. And then we're going to get out of Dodge before things go real sour. We should be fine for a little while, though. We got a lot of turrets protecting us, and they have to go a long way through them to get to us. Unless they really swarm us, we should be okay here for a little while. Can rack up some points, as everyone knows, points are what really matters. All right, time to get out. Hit the exit button, and we are out of here. We unlock the new picture in our album. What do you know? Up to floor number six, we have 106 industry on hand, 72 science, and 49 food. Very nice. You know what's great about this elevator? No damned monsters. All right, on to floor number six. Let's see how it goes. Next floor, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Okay, so here we are. We have... Looks like only two doors, which is awesome. I love two-door setups. You'll notice that we're starting with less and less dust every floor, though. That's just going to be a thing that happens. It gets harder and harder and harder to actually power all the doors and rooms you find as you travel, so... Hopefully we get a good bunch of lucky dust rooms here to start off with. There's one, that's good. So we can power this up and fight off these guys to begin with. There we go. Alright, so we're going to start off again. Pretty standard setup with an industry generator, so we can afford to build the rest of the things that we're inevitably going to try and build on this floor. And I'm going to leave... Uh I'm going to leave our agent here so he can actually operate the system to give us more power. He's probably going to come straight here anyway, but he gives us a 9 power bonus. It's amazing. We found a Stell in here. This one is a... Oh, awesome. This is a great one again. 100% speed boost again for 8 turns. This is a really nice bonus. A really nice bonus. Okay, well, we can't put anything in here until that thing breaks, which is unfortunate, but we'll deal. Let's keep going north. From here, we have found... Oh, crescent enemies. These guys are nasty. They do area of effect damage to everybody nearby them, so they can really hurt your party quickly if you're not ready for them. All right. Thankfully, though, we took them out without too much difficulty. We're going to throw down another generator in here, specifically a food replicator, and we're going to bring our favorite agent over to help, specifically agent number two. Get over there, gents. You have high speed. This should be no problem for you. And you'll be able to operate that device without any difficulties, I'm sure. Okay. So, that should give us a ton of food again, so we'll be able to level up our heroes some more. What's in this room? Some dust, but nothing else. Alright, well that's actually not bad. This is a very small contained area that we can use to hold up to some upgrades. And to keep our operators safe here. We did find a toxic cloud in that room, but there's literally nothing of value in there, so it doesn't matter. Alright, next room. Oh, treasure and nine dust? What's the treasure item? A soul taker. I don't think anybody can use that. That's a sword, and none of our party wear use swords. That's too bad. That is too bad indeed. An exceedingly sharp blade used to repair exceedingly large shoes. Har har. Alright, so... We have got to keep exploring here and seeing what else we can find. We have enough dust to open one more door safely at the moment. And we found a science room. Okay, well, what's in here? 
We can get a food replicator four if we have a hundred research. That might be worth doing. We'll need to put down a science module somewhere, though. Can I put one in here? Yes, I can. All right, we're going to throw down a science generator in here, so generate us some science so that we can upgrade our food generator module with this. On the other hand, we could get the pepper spray module, which is a fun one. I don't know. Or get the dust field generator so we're not so easy to kill. That might be a good one, too. I haven't experimented with a lot of these modules yet, so I'm not entirely sure which ones are the best. This seems pretty good, though. Adding 30% defense to heroes in the same room would make you a lot harder to take out. The thing about that is you have to know where you're going to be fighting, and you might not always know where you're going to be fighting, whereas you know that enemies are going to walk into a room with a pepper spray in it, they're going to get hit. Hmm. This seems like a good item to me, though, so we're going to grab it. Might have been better to wait for the food replicator upgrade, but I like that pepper spray one, so we're going to give it a try. Let's go through here and see what's in this room. Looks like not a whole lot. Eight dust, though, and some food. Can't complain about that. All right, we're going to need to throw in some defensive turrets in these rooms then, because we're quickly running out of positions which we can put dust in. Throw that in there, and we'll throw in a tear gas and see how that works. And that should be enough for now. That's all we've really got access to still. We'll leave one option open there so we can put some more things in later if we want. Or two slots, I suppose. Let's check out this room. What's in here? Dead end? Okay, that's good. That one has poison gas in it. This one has monsters in it. Alright. These guys should go down pretty quick, though. Especially if they walk out into here. Yes, indeed. They're getting blasted by our defenses. Looks like that tear gas thing might be helping. It's hard to tell for sure what it's doing so far, but... It seems like it might be having a good effect on it. Treasure again. Excellent. And we got our pepper spray unlocked. That is a zone device. I have no idea what that is. I haven't seen that one before. The zone device. 25 defense, 2 HP regeneration, and unlocks Neurostun Light. Discovered somewhere in the abandoned halls of the dungeon, this strange artifact generates a defensive field and smells like butter. Weird, I have no idea what that does. You can't use it because it's clothes, though. A lot of defense on it, though. That's a pretty powerful defensive item. I'm going to give that to uh, Gork here. He could use some power-up, especially because he uses the War Cry, which causes everyone to attack him. What does this do? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Monsters in the same room as him get slowed down by four. That's really cool. Okay, so he's really tough now. We really need better weapons. I mean, we have two people who are using the... Three people! Three of our heroes are using the base weapon. We have nowhere near enough devices to equip everyone with. Almost nobody has a device. We have one device. We have one basic weapon. We really need to find some better gear. Holy cow. Alright, let's keep going. We're probably going to get... it. Uh, rushed soon, but we got a bunch of defenses in here. I'm going to throw in a pepper spray in this room as well. Pepper sprays are cool as well because they target the most powerful monster in the room, so if there's a lot of nasties in there, you can count on your pepper spray making one of the most dangerous ones fight for you. This looks like a dead-end room, and we found, oh, this might actually be really good. We have a lot of resources, and this guy might sell us some important stuff. He sells us a fire pick, which is a 28 attack power spear. That sounds really good compared to what we have already. The Widower Maker is a better machine gun by a large margin. That sounds good. Uh, so the fire pick here is good for those times when drawing blood is just not enough. Oh, we're spending dust on these, though. That's like the one resource I don't have any of. You jerk. Making me do the hard decisions here. Because this stuff seems really valuable, but I don't know if we can afford to get any of it. Using dust to purchase things is tough. Okay, we'll sell the Soul Taker, because none of us can use it. What do we need here? The Widower Maker is probably a better idea, because we already have a spear, even though it's not a good one. This is almost... This is over twice as good as the Toothpick is. This one... That's 25, though. Holy cow. It is expensive. That's like two and a half rooms of dust. That's so much. But two people could use it, but it's... Oh, it's so much, though. It's such a huge attack bonus, but it does slow us down. I'd probably give that to her, because then she'd be a comparable speed with Gork. But, oh, man. That is a pain. That is a lot of dust to buy that thing. I really want it, though, because like I was just saying, we really need items. But, of course, he offers us the one, item, the one type of item I can't really afford to give him any of. 
All right, well, let's try and levels up some people then, because we gotta got to get power where we can get it then. We can put some into Elise here. 65 will give her a bit more defense and attack power. No new skills. Now we get a new skill. I might put another one into her right away to get her to level 6 and see what her new skill is. Ooh, that looks interesting. The Shrapnelizer. Monsters in the room take... 180 HP worth of damage, and the heroes in the room take 80 HP of damage. Ooh. And artifacts and modules in the room take damage. Everything takes damage. That's what that does. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like out wep uh, abilities that hurt your allies, but... It's interesting, at least. He's gonna blow everything up with that ability. Okay, well... We've cleared out this area, which is interesting. We might come back here and buy that gun for dust right before we leave, because that way we get all the benefits of the, uh... What am I trying to say? All the benefits of having the gun without having such a huge penalty from losing all the dust. Because if we if we sell it for dust while we're exploring, then we're literally just crippling ourselves. Making it harder to explore safely. Well, we found another character, but we have a full party, so we're going to ignore them. All right, let's grab this power out to put in here. This room is already well defended, so that should be fine. Hop back in here and check this out. We could go back and do some more research now, but I think we're not going to yet. This room is also empty. We're going to need to put some defenses in here, I think. If we want to be able to hold this place at all. So I'll put some of those in. We'll throw in a tear grass, and we'll throw in a pepper spray. That should make things a little bit nicer. And there's enemies behind us. All right, team, back over this way. We now have a bunch of defensive abilities here, which is... Okay, hang on. Accidentally clicked on the science generator. Okay, science machine, rather. We can buff up the science creation, or we can go for some other abilities. I think we're going to buff up our science creation. Getting more power from those machines is almost always worth getting. He's trying to book it out of here, but that's not going to work. They're going to fight each other. Please stop telling me that we're researching this. Lots of damage is happening, but I can't tell who's taking the most of it. Are we doing okay? We're taking damage. Stop telling me that we're researching that. Let's activate the turtle mode on our primary warrior here, so she's a little bit better defended. There's a lot, a lot of damage happening in here. It's not pleasant. Thankfully, I think we're actually surviving it pretty safely. Turtle mode definitely helped, though. She took a lot less damage than she could have there. Okay, so there's some nasty waves in here. We need to find this exit in a hurry. Because right now, we're not, uh... We're not doing it. And if we don't find it and get out of here, they are just gonna kill us. So let's get looking. We gotta hunt this thing down quick. And a four-way room is not what I was hoping for. We need to find another science machine. Anything good here? Not really. Pepper spray 2 would be nice, but we need more science for that, so we can get that after we open the next door. But we have no nowhere near enough dust to make these areas reasonably, reasonable to explore. Alright, let's send you guys back to here. We're going to open this door instead. Last thing we want to do is get too far away without any way to light our path safely. So let's open this door and see what we find. Bunch of monsters. Alright, that's fair. To be expected, really. And a swarm is coming, so this is going to hurt, most likely. Okay, well, let's, uh, we could hold the line here to make sure we don't take too much damage right now. It's probably a good idea. Because the last thing we want to do is take a bunch of damage before we have to fight a bunch of monsters and potentially take a bunch of damage. So let's get them back over here. Guys, over here to fight, because I don't want to be one at a time in there, otherwise you will get murdered. Oh, there's even more coming. Alright, you're going to stay in here. You're going to go in there. You in here are going to power up this. No, you're going back in this room. We're taking a bunch of damage here, which is not great. We activate the war cry, so anybody who's in here has to fight us so they don't go into our core. But keep an eye on our health. Everybody's going to come back into this room now, because those guys have all left. There's tons of damage happening in here right now. Gork is taking some serious hits. We're going to make sure he doesn't die, hopefully, here. He is still war crying. Yeah, now he's not, though, so most of the enemies should leave him alone. And we're okay. We had to use a bunch of abilities there, but we made it through unscathed. Okay. We need to find the exit. Real bad. Everybody over this way. 
We have a whole bunch of food again, so we can do another level up. So let's pause here and see who we want to level up this time. Probably Ma uh, Gork, because he hasn't uh, leveled up in a while. He's still level 5. That'll get him a bunch of bonuses, defense, speed, and damage. That's all good. And some more health. And one more will get him another passive. That might be nice. For now, though, we're not going to worry about that. We are just going to open the next door. Looking for the exit still. Looking for the exit. There's a bunch of... Uh, dust again, which is awesome. We can use that to make this a little bit safer for us. I should probably throw some defenses in these rooms too, though, because right now we are taking a lot of hurt from our enemies here. So let's throw down some prisoner prods like there, there, and there, and there, and we'll also throw in a tear gas in this room and a pepper spray in this room, and we will actually, I'm just going to put another shooter in here. We don't really need to have Anything else in that room? It's only got two spots anyway. This might be a good place to throw down a tactical HUD, though, to get us some more damage. I can actually put it in here now that the uh, the node is gone. I'm going to do that. That should make us tougher. Although it sounds like enemies, yep, enemies have spawned. Since it didn't, uh, didn't immediately build, we could tell there had been some enemies appearing around here. Alright, let's fight these guys. We have a lot of firepower to throw at them. They're fighting each other. That was not so bad. That mind control effect really helps. Okay. Okay, we're good. So we gotta find this door still, but things are looking pretty good here. We actually stomped through that pretty reasonably, and that extra damage definitely helps. Let's head over this way. We're still generating a whole lot of food, so we should be able to hopefully level up again soon. What's in this room? Treasure chest. Hopefully there's something good in here and a bunch of dust. What do we get? Tools belt again. Well, that's not amazing. Unfortunately, we're looking for more combat-oriented items, not more passive ones. So we're going to turn off this direction here so these guys can't, or rather turn on this direction so they can't spawn over there. And that makes this area a bit safer to explore because we only have one other angle they can attack and both of these rooms are pretty heavily defended. So that should be okay. Tool's Belt is really not what I was looking for, though, because it doesn't actually help any of our combat stats. It just gives us the repair ability and uh, boosts some wit, which is not really what we're looking for. I'll give it to, to you, though, Elise Ness, since you already have Operate as well. Not that I'm ever going to leave you in a room with a device, since you're a lot of firepower for us. Let's check out this room. What's in here? Looks like a big one. A lot of dust and a lot of baddies. All right, let's just make sure that we survive this. Activate Armchair General here. For some serious bonus firepower to make sure we don't get crushed by these area of effect attacks and these wizards which weaken our attacks. And we can successfully ignore this area now. Let's book it over in this direction. There should be one enemy in here. Yeah, he'll die though. Lasers will get him if we don't. And we did. Very nice. Okay. So. Is there any dust lying around in these other rooms? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so we know the exit has to be over this way then. That's good. It's definitely good. We've been going a long time, though, without finding it, and that's dangerous. The longer we wait here without finding where we need to be, the nastier this whole place gets. I'm going to send Gork to check out the science machine so he can potentially uh, get us something good here. Pepper spray upgrade, we'll take that. Pepper spray is a nice little addition to our arsenal of towers. We'll go check out what we can find over this way. Problem is, the further away we get from this choke point here, the harder it is for us to defend it. Let's try. Try another door. What's in here? Some science and some dust. All right, well, we can power this room then, which is another little safety net for us. That gets us six more science, but we have to book it back over this way, because otherwise the enemies are going to be getting through here pretty soon. We've got a good amount of defense in these rooms, but not enough to make it safe for us to just ignore it. Okay, that's a whole lot of bad guys. This could be a problem for us. We have our yelling abilities. I think we do. Yeah, we have our tanking abilities ready to go here. We may need to tank this pretty darn hard. So we're going to war cry this, and we're going to hold the line this. The enemy shouldn't be able to leave, but they also shouldn't be able to really hurt us. Because we should have a ton of extra defense. Okay, we did it. That was good. That's a good combo, too. The hold the line there really gives us the ability to uh, tank our way through there pretty successfully. 
So that's pretty nice. Okay. So now we know there's only two more paths over here it could possibly be. The longer we wait, though, the harder it's going to be. So let's boogie. Hopefully it's not too much further. I could have built more generators in this level, but I'm still kind of worried about all the madness we're potentially getting into here as we uh, continue to delve deeper. There's no other places we can build primary slots that are more protected than that, is there? No. Because I'd love to put down another tactical heads-up display, because that would give us... Uh, Sorry, horribly unergonomic display. That's the official name of it. Uh, it would be real nice to be able to defend ourselves. Oh, I can't put one in here! Oh, sweet, I'm doing that. Put another horribly unergonomic un display in there. Because that should give us even more defense, which would be, or rather, more offense, which would be great for not dying. What's in this room? Some dust. Okay, we can power that. And we found the exit. Oh, sweet. Okay, that's awesome. Let's quickly check these other rooms, maybe. It might not be a good idea to go much further than this. We might just want to rush out of here, but it's a bad idea to leave these areas unchecked because enemies will spawn in them if we don't power them before we try and leave. And we're getting dust like crazy, which is awesome. Just awesome. We have 133 food again, so we should level somebody up. Probably going to level you up there, Warden Mormish. Not going to get too much out of you here. Just some more health, defense. Nothing that actually helps what you're currently doing, but... It'll get you another passive soon, which might be really useful to us. So, we'll do it anyway. Heroes, back over this way. And all the way back this way, in fact. Pepper Spray 2 is unlocked now, so we should have extra long mind controls now as well to benefit us. Hopefully, these guys get uh, bothered by our defenses and don't just crush us underfoot. Let's power up the Gork attacks. We're actually doing okay here now. This is good. I was worried there for a moment, but we're, uh, we're looking pretty solid here right now. Okay, that was awesome. This is a really tough defensive line for them to get through, which is exactly what we need. Okay, we're going to check this door as well, because if this is the last one, then we can make a successful escape, and there's literally nothing they're going to be able to do about it, which will be awesome, but it all comes down to this being a reasonable escape. Is this a short path, or is this a long one? That's the last door of the current floor. Sweet! We've done it. We've got this all sorted out. We have to fight these guys, obviously, first, so it's not home free yet, but we're definitely looking good. Let's try this button. Okay, that definitely just hurts everything. Not bad for empty rooms like this. And here comes the swarm I was wondering about. All right. Let's get over here. We need to make sure that somebody's in this room to stop them from rushing past. Do we have the Gork ability ready to go again? I think we do. Yes, we do. Okay, we're fine here. We're going to go into super defense turtle mode again. And you know what? We'll add in some armchair general as well just to obliterate these poor fools. Because now we should have some serious crushing power under our belts. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you poor fools. All right, they had no chance there. We just obliterated them. So, we're going to bring you back over. You're going to start heading to the exit, because you're going to need to. We're going to start depowering these rooms, so we can depower the way to the exit. Actually, we've got more dust there, so we're looking even better off than we were before. Look at all of this coverage. Holy cow. They cannot touch us this time. This is turning into a pretty long episode, but uh, we are in a good spot right now. A good spot indeed. So we're going to get our fastest person over here to grab the core, as always. And we can gonna, we're actually going to go spend some dust for sure. So let's do that quickly. We're going to send... Oh, no, I don't like this. Okay, I'm going to send you over here quickly to go get us some more dust. Because then you'll be able to sell, uh, sell that and get us that gun, which is going to make a huge difference to us. Alright, you buy the gun. The Widower Maker. It's going to cost us power, but at this point we can afford to do that. And that's going to give us a huge damage boost... Just huge. I'm going to give it to Gork, I think. The Widower Maker. Makes him slower, though. I think we, we, we decided it was better to give it to Elise. Because that way they're about the same speed. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so powerful. All right, let's do it. Take this. Machine gun slot. Can we sell anything into him? No. I could buy the fire pick as well. Do we have enough power to afford to drop one more room? 
Yeah, we could afford... No, hang on, because I need to have this and this for here and here. Is there any other rooms we need? Let's clear at least his nest is out of the way. We could... No, I kind of like having these rooms covered, because those are the ones that have all of our defenses in them. Okay, so we're going to leave the fire pick behind. We'll have to do without that, but uh, having that gun is going to be super helpful, I think. Can we afford to lose one more room? We can afford to lose this room, I think, because we're going to be moving out of there pretty quickly, and this one will slow them down. Yeah, okay. So let's zoom in here. We'll buy that spear as well. We can probably trade him the one we've already got. Talk, Get out of the way and talk to him. There we go. If we buy the fire pick and sell him the toothpick, we should be able to... Uh, make some of our cost back. There we go. So the, oh, it's only two power. Okay, so we don't actually get enough to get a room back, but... Nobody else uses that, so we'll just sell it. Whatever. Probably should have held onto it and sold it to a merchant who actually would help us, but you know what? At this point, I'm not too bothered by it. Get him over here, pick this object up, and let's book it to the exit. Because we are going to need to move in a hurry. Alright, close this. Grab that. Do it. And get out. So the nasties will be coming, but we should have a pretty easy escape here. We got a lot of good turrets and defenses to slow the enemies down. And they're starting pretty far away as well, so we're actually... Uh-oh, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. That's real bad. Okay. We need to get over there in a hurry. Everybody over here. Somehow I didn't see this room, and it's now unpowered. <sighs> that's... Oh, it's because it's left the... Oh, that's so dumb! It left enough power to power a room in my inventory and turned off a room instead. I assumed when I had enough spare dust, when he took dust from me, it wouldn't depower anything. Oh, no. Okay, well, this could be a problem then. Let's get over here. Get everybody over here. We're going to take a bunch of damage here, potentially, but we should be able to get out. Yeah, we should be able to get out, no problem. we got a bunch of people right by the exit already. Okay, we're good. Oh, scary there for a second, but I think we're actually safe. So we're just going to exit here. It's not worth hanging around when we're at risk here, so let's just leave. Okay. That could have been bad. We leave with a bunch of food, a bunch of industry, a bunch of science, a bunch of monsters killed, a bunch of doors opened, on to floor number seven. These monsters, are they more skulking or slinking? I couldn't tell you. Either way, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing some Dungeon of the Endless here for you, traversing higher up through the dungeon we have plunged into so abruptly. But this is going to be it for now, so if you enjoyed the episode, let me know what you thought about in the comments below. Thank you again very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye down by enemies in the area. Gork, you get another active ability if we level you up, so I'm probably going to level you up here. I think it's probably worth it. The defense and attack power will be nice, and the extra ability is a really good one. Warcry is really cool. It gives him a 70 defense buff, and it makes all of the monsters try and attack him instead of anything else. So that can be really good for stopping things from destroying your core or destroying other buildings that you really want to protect, which is pretty darn cool. So that might come in real handy up in the future here. So we'll level them up, and I guess we keep going. We've got more doors to open. We need a little bit more dust to be able to stay safe in them, but, uh... Oh, hang on. No, no. Oh, I did it again. All right. Well, I'm going to move you off of science and put you back on food generation, since I moved you by mistake anyway. I was only at 6 before. So it's at 12 before he starts doing work, and we'll see what it switches to now. Our friends over here, though, have been fighting some horribly bloated abominations. Those guys explode when you kill them, so if you're not careful, they can do a lot of damage in a hurry. Rather, they, do ex they explode when they attack. This is another dead end, so it's actually a lot of good places for us to build up in here. It's going to be really expensive to build another one, though, so I'm not really keen on putting another primary construction there. But, uh... That was pretty interesting as far as actually finding good stuff at the beginning here goes. We had a very nice run of being able to get our production up. Are you operating this now? It's 12 now? What was it at before, then? I guess it was at 6 before? Is it still only 6 boost? I wish I could see where all the sources were if I hovered over it. That would be a nice little change, but uh, that doesn't seem to be an option, so we'll just keep going. 
In here we find a bit more dust so we can power this room. No major nodes in here, but a bunch of small ones, so we'll be able to hopefully protect ourselves if anything nasty is lying down this way. There's our science machine, let's take a look. We can get the tactical heads up display, that's a nice one. Pepper spray is a really cool ability though, I might get this one. You spray enemies with this as a module and it causes them to attack each other. Pretty darn interesting. I might grab that one instead of the tactical heads up display, but this one is good already because it uses a couple different things differently. For one thing, this buffs all of our attack powers, and the other thing about it is that it has a separate cost from the generators. So these generators cost 45 to build now, this still only costs 35 to build, so it's kind of it's kind of a different thing to take. I think I might grab this just because it's a useful ability to have access to if you've bought, built a whole bunch of generators but have a bunch of major nodes you still want to take advantage of. So we'll see about that afterwards. Alright, so we can't power this room though, we're gonna need to throw in some defenses here. We're gonna put some in this room Throwing down some prisoner prod power already, so maybe not. Let's go straight to the west again still. This seems like it's been pretty effective so far. Another room with a ton of dust in it. That's awesome. In here, I think we're going to throw down another industry generator, though, because right now we're not generating enough to really keep up with our demand. So we'll do that and we'll keep going. Here we find some free industry. Well, that's going to help. <laughs> Nine free industry. Okay, well that's a lot of goods. We can throw down another uh, generator here, but I don't know if that's really a great idea at the moment. It's going to cost us a whole ton of resources. And then if we need to build anything soon, we're going to be hard-pressed to actually have the stuff to do it. But I'm kind of tempted to put one down anyway, just because it'll help us stay ahead. So we're going to put another food replicator down, and that should really speed up the rate at which we can uh, level up our characters. Since we're only at low level right now, let's take a look at them. We can love up Elise Ness for 52. We can do Jaleri. She gets a skill, so we'll level her up and it's even cheaper for her, so... Let's do that. That gets her... Uh, that gets us, rather, her War Rider her ability. That one gives us a 10 speed boost and a 50 defense boost on herself for 10 seconds, which can be really good for getting her somewhere in a hurry and making sure she doesn't die en route. Especially with her Scamper ability, so she doesn't get looks like right here. Yes. Okay. Well, that's handy. We immediately found another place we can build something. In here, we're going to throw down a science generator, I think. Another food replicator would be good, so we can keep ahead of the leveling curve. But right now, what I want is more technology. The faster we gain the ability to actually stay ahead of our, uh, our enemy's advancement, will be good days. So, there is poison gas in here, unfortunately, so it's going to make things a bit slower, but we should be okay. We'll see what the boost is here. Originally, it was six, so we'll see if it's better than that this time. Once we open the door, the increase changes to... Oh, it's a science. I wasn't looking at the right number. Alright, well it was 15. It's 15 now. I don't remember what it was before, unfortunately. We got some nasty snaky monsters in here, but we should be able to gun them down. There we go. Turn the lights on in here, and we're going to throw down a food replicator as well. Excellent. So we got all of our resources generating. 15 science a turn is pretty darn good though, so I can't complain about that. Let's go to the next room and see what's in here. Lots and lots of dust, and we found a self-powered room. This is actually really nice. Found a couple really good rooms in this direction. This has been a pretty sweet start. I'm tempted to throw some turrets in here, because I have a feeling we're going to need them soon, but we have two rooms worth of... Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of Dungeon of the Endless. So, we're up on floor number five right now, and unfortunately we've got to venture deeper into this mess of a place. So, we have a four-way intersection to start us off with here, which is particularly nasty, but we're going to see what happens as we get going. So we're going to start off by heading over in the left direction. What is lying off to our west? Thankfully there is a place here we can start a major construction, and there's a free item in here too. That's a good start. That gives us a tools belt. I think that gives somebody the operator's job. No, it lets him repair things. Okay, that's good too. I'm going to be giving that to uh, our primary wit user here, Warden Momish. Because, Mormish rather. That will buff up, hopefully, the amount of extra um, resources he gives us. And will let him repair things that are damaged in his room. So that could be pretty darn useful. For now, though, we're just going to keep moving, and after, actually before that, we're going to throw down an Industry Generator Mark III first. Because that should help us 
stay ahead of the curve here and make sure we don't run into problems. I am going to leave Mormish behind though, so he'll be able to generate more industry for us until we find somewhere we can build something else which 